just heard of the history of Ada Lovelace, so I'm not going to say too much about that. Um, you know about her notes on uh, Babbage's um, analytical engine. And I'd like to point your attention to this part of her notes that actually says that the engine might not only act on numbers, but also act on things other than numbers. And some of those things might be music. And if we are able to, for instance, um, take the fundamental relations of pitched sounds and represent it in such a way as to be adapted to the machine and to be ma manipulated by the machine, then this engine might one day be able to compose elaborate and scientific pieces of music. So I only have time, 10 minutes, to focus on one or the other. So I'm only going to focus on representation of these fundamental relations of pitched sounds so that they can be manipulated and understood by machines. So here we go. Fundamental relations of pitched sounds. A hundred years before Ada Lovelace, um, there was a mathematician named Leonard Euler. And Leonard Euler um, had come up with this representation of pitched sounds where you have on the horizontal axis these notes. Okay, so these are related by fifths, they have a very nice sound. That sounds good, as opposed to. Okay, so that's a very nice sound, the fifth. And vertically, we have these lovely sounds as well, uh, a different kind of lovely sound. So the sound is, again, as opposed to. Okay. <laughs> so if you look at this grid and stare at it long enough, you're going to think you're, look, you're seeing double because, well, things repeat. Um, there's a D here, there's a D there. And what you could do is possibly just wrap up the D in the days of transparencies. You could sort of roll the D up over the other one, staple it together, and you would see something that looks like this, a helix. So the helical form of that representation um, is, the is the mathematical basis of my doctoral dissertation many years ago. And once you have a mathematical representation, you can write nice algebraic equations to represent what those pictures are. And uh, we can start looking at, since this is in three dimensions, we can start playing around with the space inside. So things that are nicely sounding, like These are lovely sounds that make these nice triangles. Other lovely sounds make these other nice triangles. Every triangle can be represented by a dot in the center of that triangle, and we can draw another helix through it in the inside, so we get another inner helix. It's beautiful. This is, we can't keep going. This, uh, another lovely equation to <laughs> represent it. And here we go. Okay, now. three chords that define sort of, you can accompany every single piece with those three chords. And so those three chords are these three points, and we can look at that. Those three points as representing all the notes you need to make any song. And so we have all these possible triangles, both making all the possible songs in all the different keys. And again, we represent them by dots on those triangles, and we get another inner helix. <laughs> Yes, so we have three layers of helices we can keep going on. Another lovely set of equations. Yeah, okay, so, and now, um, this is serious now. I actually got a PhD for this, <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, I'd like to point out what is most unique about my PhD, or uh, rather I'm very proud of this, uh, due to no effort of mine, is that I had three other women uh, sign on the cover of my PhD thesis, and this was no small feat given the number of men that were in the department and in the institution at that time. 
And one of them was this fabulous woman, Jean Bamberger, who was my supervisor. She was one of the pioneers in music and artificial intelligence. And she started out as a piano a prodigy and studied with Arthur Schnabel, and then later on sort of reinvented herself and started working on music software. And she taught me that it was possible to have another life that was different from the more tra traditional forms of music careers, uh, which is simply straight uh, performance. And the second woman who signed on that was Georgia Parakis, uh, who's now um, also a professor of operations research at MIT. And um, she preceded me in receiving one of the highest honors for scientists and engineers in the United States. Um, this is the PKs Award. And four years later, since I knew that that could be done, having seen another woman do it, um, I got my own award uh, for further work um, in music and engineering. And the third woman to sign on that was Cynthia Barnhart, who at the time was co-director of the Operations Research Center, and now today is the chancellor of MIT. So it's, um, I couldn't say that I have anything to do with all the accolades and anything that they've achieved, but I'm just very proud that they were willing to support a dissertation on a topic that was at that time not even really a field to speak about. And um, this really speaks a lot um, for the kind of support they were extending to me um, for doing something entirely non-traditional and esoteric. So um, at this point, um, following graduation, I followed up on work on this set of spirals and um, started a collaboration with Alex Francois, who is a software engineer, and his software architecture allowed the model to be um, turned into a, an interactive live demonstration, which is basically what I'm going to show you today. And at this point, I'm going to cut out of the presentation and do the demonstration. Okay, so this piano is here for a reason. <laughs> so I did that before. think, what's that dodecahedron doing? That dodecahedron <laughs> is <laughs> it's actually labeling the key. So the chords are the triangles, and the dodecahedron shows you where the key is. Um, and you can do things like figuring out when something is totally wrong. Um, most of you know this. Yeah. Uh, this one, I actually need to look at the score, uh, because he does something quite unusual. Okay, so it starts with, let's reset this. Okay, it's... You can see it went up to E where none of the trails had been. So the region where it's been is where it should be, and when it goes up to that E is where it should not be. So that's how we know um, it's a PDQ Bach doing something surprising. Okay, so um, I was very pleased and lucky that this um, I was um, able to show um, Musart an analyzing some um, uh, Rachmaninoff's Rhapsody on the Theme of Paganini for the um, Los Angeles Philharmonic's Inside the Music series. And um, also all of this theory has been um, elaborated and um, described in a book that recently came out a year ago. 
And um, as we move forward into Ada Lovelace's prediction, today computers are able to comp compose elaborate and complex pieces, um, scientific pieces, but they're also doing this by learning from humans. They're taking human input and then responding and sending out output, and the human further interacts with the computer. So this is done in tandem with machines, um, which is how I interpret what she meant, uh, what she, uh, what she said to mean um, that the analytical engine has no pretensions whatever to originate anything. It can do whatever we know how to order it to perform. And um, this is um, this part of the quote. And um, today we are also able to look at different performances, the central side of music performance, and compare how different artists interpret the same piece of music. So these are sort of the timings that are taken uh, by different pianists shown up there uh, in a performance of Richard Strauss. And we can also allow people to control these parameters and generate expressive music and experience what it's like to perform music. And um, here we come to the second part of the quote, where it says that by making something like music amenable to the mechanical combinations of a machine, then we are forced to look more carefully at these relations of, of the nature of the subject. And we are then forced to also look at it under new light and also to be able, it allows us to be able to investigate it more profoundly. And that's indeed what we are doing today um, at the Center for Digital Music, where I'm working uh, with my colleagues. And um, if you're interested in learning more, you can find out more at uh, my website above. Thank you.